In the next few videos, we're going to go over prokaryotic gene expression. This video is going to talk about the operon from the Jacob Monod model, as well as negative control of operons. So first of all, an operon is a DNA sequence that includes a promoter, an operator, and a set of genes that are regulated together. The idea here is that prokaryotic mRNA is polycystronic. Multiple protein products are encoded by each mRNA molecule. Now, in many ways, this seems very efficient. For example, if a protein wanted to carry out a particular biochemical process, instead of having to produce a separate mRNA for each protein or enzyme required for the process, prokaryotes produce a single mRNA that encodes for all of the necessary proteins and enzymes in one nucleotide molecule. All right. So we have the promoter. The promoter we've discussed before. This is a DNA sequence that is recognized by RNA polymerase for transcription. And the operator, this is new. This is a DNA sequence that a repressor can bind to. And to understand the repressor, we can look at negative control. So first of all, operons can be regulated in two ways, negative control or positive control. In this video, we're going to look at negative control. In the next video, we're going to look at positive control. Negative control and positive control also have two types of their own. So to be complete, there are really four different types of operons. In negative control, the repressor protein binds to the operator. And when the repressor protein binds to the operator, RNA polymerase is blocked, so transcription cannot occur. This repressor protein, however, is not always going to be able to bind to the repressor protein. Whether or not it can bind is going to depend on the presence or absence of some sort of inducer molecule. So the inducer molecule is able to bind to the repressor protein. This is able to alter the conformation of the repressor protein. And when the conformation of the repressor protein is changed, that can allow or prevent the repressor protein from binding to the operator. Let's look at how this works. We're going to start first with what is called the negative inducible operon. Negative means that this is negative control involving a repressor protein. Inducible means that this is an operon whose transcription can be turned on. So a very good example of this is the LAC operon, which you do want to be familiar with for the MCAT. With the LAC operon, this is an operon that codes for the proteins for lactose metabolism. And the best way to understand how this works is by taking a look at this diagram. So you can see the way the operon is set up is there is a promoter, there is an operator, and then you have the genes for lactose metabolism. Initially, in the absence of lactose, you can see that the repressor protein is bound to the operator. This prevents RNA polymerase from transcribing the operon, so no mRNA is made. However, in the presence of lactose, lactose will actually bind to the repressor. This is going to prevent the repressor from binding to the operator. So now the RNA polymerase is free to transcribe the operon, and this is going to result in the production of the enzymes for lactose metabolism. And if you think about it, this is very logical. If no lactose is present, the prokaryote should not be making the proteins and enzymes for lactose metabolism. In the presence of lactose, then the cell should be making these proteins and enzymes for lactose metabolism. Okay, so that's the LAC operon, which is an example of a negative inducible operon. Let's now take a look at a negative repressible operon. So again, negative means that it involves a repressor that can inhibit transcription. But the fact that this is repressible means that this is an operon whose activity is usually on, and the transcription activity of this operon can be repressed. So it is repressible. And a good example of this is the trip operon, which you also want to be familiar with for the MCAT. 
The trip operon encodes for the proteins for tryptophan biosynthesis. So again, making tryptophan involves multiple enzymes. So if tryptophan is to be made, then prokaryotes are gonna produce an mRNA expressing all of the proteins for making tryptophan. Again, to better understand how this works, let's take a look at this diagram. Again, you can see the same format of the operon. You have the promoter, you have the operator, and then you have all the genes for tryptophan biosynthesis. In this case, when tryptophan is at low concentrations, the repressor cannot bind to the operator. So that means under low tryptophan concentrations, the trip operon is transcribed and the proteins for tryptophan biosynthesis are made, allowing for the biosynthesis of tryptophan. However, at high concentrations of tryptophan, tryptophan itself is going to act as the inducer molecule and bind to the repressor protein. When the repressor protein binds tryptophan, it undergoes a conformational change that now allows the repressor protein to bind to the operator. This blocks RNA polymerase from transcribing the operon. So the proteins and enzymes for tryptophan biosynthesis are no longer being made. And again, if you think about this, it makes sense that tryptophan is an essential amino acid. It's important to be produced within a cell. So when the cell doesn't have tryptophan, then the cell should be making the enzymes to produce tryptophan. However, if tryptophan levels are very high, then the tryptophan can then act as a negative feedback regulator, essentially preventing transcription of more of the mRNA for tryptophan biosynthesis proteins. So that's how the trip operon works. And here, again, we're looking at one of the two types of operons, negative control operons.